Praise God. A couple quick announcements before we dismiss our children. We raise money around here. We use the Civic Center. Uh, they have bingo on Monday night, 6 p.m. Come play bingo. If you want to help volunteer, let us know. It's a great way to have a little fun. Come out uh, and uh, help support the ministry. Next. If you want to see all the announcements, the things that are going on with the church, you can scan this code. There's also in the back, it's on the thing. You can pick it up. You can take your phone, scan that. All the church stuff will pop up. That way you've got it with you throughout the week. It's a great way to stay in touch and know what's going on. Like Mary said earlier, make sure you check out our Facebook page and um, our social media. I wish I felt that good. Next. <laughs> Offering. We don't pass a plate around here or a bucket or anything like that. Um, but we believe folks who want to give are going to give, right? If you're a giver, you're going to give. I come to give, right? There's a box in the back right there at the end of the back row, a big wooden box. You can put your tithe or offering in that and help support what God's got going on here. And if not, you can go to our website, lifepointministries.org. You can give securely on that. And... Um, we also have a, a text to give code. It's in the back. I know other people usually handle that, but you, if you want to give around here, we'll make a way to, to get there for you to give. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say, but we're not going to pass a plate around and stick it in front of you and all that good such. All right. Help one. We always need help around here. So those of you that may or may not know our main mission around here is helping those most in need in our community. What you see in this building here is a fraction of the people who actually serve and work and, and do here. Um, we, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago of our Crew 29 outreach team, those who help those most in need in our community, the broken, the addicted, the homeless, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there were 11 churches represented there. So we're just Life Point Church here in Titusville, Florida. That's our little C church. But we are plugged into the big C church, the church that Jesus Christ is the head of. And uh, we serve alongside a lot of other churches who come here and help us fulfill the mission of being love in action. So get involved with that. If you want to know more about that, see Mary Dowdy. She's our director. We need help with children's ministry, first impressions. Richard Evans right up here. Fundraising and hospitality. If you can help in any of those areas, we want to get you plugged in and serving. Next. Oh, it's time to preach. A couple quick things. It's time for our children to be dismissed. Any little ones want to go to the back. Miss Jennifer's got a great lesson to, uh, planned for our children back there. And we want them to go enjoy that. We don't have a nursery yet. We're working on that. So these little ones in here, they don't bother me a bit. Um, I got ADD. I may stop and talk to them for a minute, but just pray for me and get, get with it and get through it. You know what I mean? We are glad that you're here. Say amen if you're glad to be here. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, this ain't the finest building in the world, but it's better than any cemetery, hospital, or jail cell anywhere in the state of Florida. Amen. Amen. And you often hear me talk about if God can use me, he can use anybody because I am the biggest mess I know. And if he can take a mess like me and make a message, then that's a great big old God. Amen. Amen. So realize that I'm just a human being, a man. Among sinners, I'm chief. And I serve a great big merciful God. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome my friend, Captain Lieutenant Ryan Brown, his beautiful wife, Jamie. They're sitting here in the middle. We're not going to embarrass them. But uh, surprised me this morning from uh, Freeport, Florida, my little house in the panel, one of my absolute lifelong best friends. Uh, a great man. You said, happy to be a captain and lieutenant. Is that confused anybody who's ever been in the ranks or anything? Well, he's the captain because he was the captain on the shrimp boat that I worked on for three or four summers for him and his daddy. And he's a licensed uh, charter captain, but he's a lieutenant with the Walton County Sheriff's Department. So that is Captain Lieutenant Ryan Brown, one of my very best friends. Thank him and his wife for being here and surprising me today. Cabbage, my man. If I know you just coming, I'd cook you a mess of rutabaga. I'll let you buy that for sure. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. So today's message, and I can tell you right now, it's going to be today. Next time I come back, the next time I come back, the next time I come back. Today's message is about faith. God impressed on my heart this week. Uh, uh, faith. And, and, and 
when you're a preacher, you preach every week, you're trying to find things to talk about. Yes, God, God, what do you want me to preach about? Well, you can always preach on faith. You can always preach on hope. You can always preach on sin. Sometimes you get that mindset, man, I think it's something new. And God impressed on me. You don't got to think of nothing new when it comes to faith because faith is not a one-time experience. I exhibited faith in God. God, I believe in you. I'm exhibiting faith in you, right? And I did this this one moment, so now I got it all worked out. Faith is a journey, and there are stages to that faith. And uh, it, it's it's like this all the way through it, but I, I want to be going in the right direction. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to take a look at some of the steps in the ladder of progressive faith. Because I want my faith to grow, right? I want it to progress. I want it to enhance. I want it to be more than it was yesterday. Now, I'm going to be, uh, if, if you take notes, get ready. I'm going to be spouting off a lot of scripture. One of the scriptures I want to, probably one of the first Bible verses I had to learn as a kid, other than John 3, 16, uh, was Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. So the entire object of what we're doing here, I'm talking, you're listening and hearing, and hopefully I'm preaching and teaching the word of God so that our faith might be strengthened. That, strengthened. That's the purpose of this, right? We're doing this in accordance to scripture. So then faith comes by hearing and her, hearing by the word of Christ, the word of God, amen? So today as we embark in the word of God, I'm going to be, I'm not going to take time to go to each scripture, each reference, but I'll just tell you where I found that at. Our key scripture, next slide, buddy, is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. Supplement means to add to, right? in addition to, right? So our faith isn't just this object of a thing and then we're supposed to have our faith and add to it. Supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. Man, memorize that. Try to learn that and live by that. If you do, you will exhibit amazing faith. What is faith? I looked it up in the dictionary. It's a noun. I mean, it's a thing. It's not an idea. It's a, it's a thing. A tangible, absolute thing. Webster defines it as complete. I'm going to stop right there. Complete. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. A firm belief even in the absence of proof. Well, I got good news for you. I do not have to have faith in the absence of proof. Because I know my God is real because he's proved it in my life over and over again. So today we're not talking about faith with proof of something we don't know. Because I know that I know, Brother James. I know God is real. Why? Because I can feel him. I know him. I've seen him too many times. That God is real. Just as real as you or me. Just as real as that baby or this desk here. My faith is in something that I know is real. Amen? amen. Say amen if you believe it's real. Amen. Okay. So it'll be an easy message to preach. I told you it'll be uplifting. The Christian life is based on faith. It is based off of a faith system that if a person is saved, made right with God, and they can uh, attain undeserved privilege of heavenly inheritance, we know that faith comes from hearing the word of God. I just said that. You can't have faith outside of hearing the word of God. We know you can have 
faith in something else, you can't have faith in God without hearing the word. Right? D does my good works give you faith in God? No. You got faith in me. We talk about it all the time in our crew 29 outreach, right? We talk about this. I, I care, we can feed a thousand bellies. Right? And that ain't going to get a soul saved that's going to feed bellies. Uh, we, we can put a, a, a million pair of clothes out of our warehouse on folks that ain't got clothes. It don't get one person saved. Right? It is the word of God. Faith in the word of God and what God says and in relationship with Jesus Christ and only that relationship that offers salvation. Amen? Well, I'm a good person. A good person will get you nowhere except the star on your chart in kindergarten. I'm just saying we need to know that we're saved. Even, even as believers, we're often, remember I said a minute ago, I don't have to believe in something I don't know is real because I know it's real. But you know, even as believers, sometimes we have to believe in things we can't see with our own eyes. I'm going to give you these. Somebody come pass these out. Object lesson today. Thank you, thank you. God said they don't have to be cold. Those of you that have been around a little bit, you understand what that means. We were out under the bridge one night helping serve that ministry. Cold night shelters were closed down. The only one that opened because of COVID. There were 50 or 60 people gathered under that bridge out there with no home. And I don't know if you've ever been on the water and, and a northeaster blowing about 30 miles an hour and it 25 degrees. Well, what I'm telling you is that is not tank top weather. you got to have on more than just your deck boots, Brother Ryan. They said, there is no shelter going to be open at that moment. Help, hope was lost. I heard someone groan. And in my arrogance, in my ignorance, I was sitting scrolling on Facebook or something on my phone when they made that announcement. And I looked back down I said, oh, that stinks. They're going to be cold out here. That's just exactly what Satan wanted me to do. They're going to be cold out here, but I'll be at the house in my king-sized bed, snuggle up to Miss Morris and get warm. I looked back down and the hand of God touched me. And he said, they don't have to be cold. We weren't having church then. We weren't even meeting then. There was nothing going on then because COVID was in full blown thing. Nothing was happening but this building that God gave us. We own this free and clear because God gave it to us, by the way. Was sitting here and the heaters worked just fine in this building. And I spoke up out of faith. I said, you don't have to be cold, says God. If you can get to the Civic Center two nights, you can get to the Civic Center two nights, I'll have the heaters turned on. I didn't know nothing what we would do. I didn't know where we'd put blankets in the floor. I had no idea what we'd do. I called Carrie and said, Carrie, I'm crazy. I just said, we're going to have a cold night shelter. Two or three people who run homeless business told me I was crazy. You shouldn't do this. I said, but God said Y'all miss that. But God said they don't have to be cold. And I have the ability to change the situation through faith. And we turn the heaters on and come in here. And out of that moment, had I missed God in that moment, everything that's in your hand right here would not have happened. This is our impact statement from 2022. This is what we did. I want to go through it with you. This isn't the message but I want to tell you, but because of faith, because I stepped out on faith, and not just me, but believers come and say, we believe. Eli sang the song, we believe in God the Father, right? We believe, we believe. Because people believed, this happened through faith. Our Sunday sat gathering tripled in 2022. Digging deeper, our Bible study is growing. Children's ministry is blossoming. Uh, 41 decisions were made to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. 
That's worth shouting. Somebody should have clapped. 41 people made heaven their home. Amen? If you can't get excited about that, you can't get excited about nothing. 27 people got baptized. We only had one concussion when that happened. <laughs> it happened. <coughs> Hundreds of volunteers, thousands of hours. 5,811 meals were served out of this building right here. 2,252 to-go meals were sent out of this building in addition to that. 522 meals were served here on Christmas Day. 46 children received Christmas. 104 families got emergency food distribution. 1,123 people took a shower in that shower right out there in the parking lot. 101 people got haircuts. 2,031 guests went through our warehouse for clothing and hygiene needs. 545 bus passes, 35 bicycles, 67 tents, 287 resource consultations. Eight people got destination travel accommodations. 982 people stayed in this building, or 982 bed nights happened in this building because they don't have to be cold. Mm -hmm. When I say Crew 29, when I say our outreach, that's what's happening by faith in this community. Because of your faith, because of our faith, and most of all, because of a faithful God. Yes. Amen? Yes. You want to get involved, there's ways to do that. But I, I wanted you to see that. Thank you. Mary and the team who put that together. I wanted you to see the substance of faith. Had I missed that moment under the bridge when God said they don't have to be cold, I don't know that any of that happens. But we didn't miss it. We didn't miss it. Faith is not a one-time activity for the believer. Rather, it's a continuous and progressive aspect of the Christian life. I need to grow in faith today. I'm going to take you through the steps of some of the faith ladder. I doubt I'll get to all of it. We're going to go as far as we can for a few minutes. The first thing is no faith. All of you just exhale. Because you say, well, he ain't talking about me. I, I got faith. I'm here. I'm at the church. I believe in Jesus. I got me some faith. He's talking to somebody else, not me. Actually, you need it's not about the unbeliever or people who have not known Christ. Scripture actually points the finger at us. Although we may tend to justify ourselves by saying, oh, we're believers and oh, I know God. But the truth is, many of us often have no faith. Many of us walk around with no faith, especially when we face the most troubling times in life. In Mark 35 through 41 and in Luke 8, 22 through 25, we see the story of Jesus when he calmed the storm with his disciples across the lake. Now, let me, let me reiterate that for those of you who missed it. He was with his disciples. He wasn't with them, but did it say he was with a whole bunch of heathens and unbelievers? He was with his disciples, his elect, the ones who knew him. And the disciples were screaming and hollering, Lord, go drown in him. We get arrogant as Christians. Well, I can't believe they didn't believe Jesus. Like we're so much better, right? There they had Jesus, God in the flesh, in the boat with them, and they was worried. I wasn't worried. I had they had Jesus with me. Let's sit, let's me and you sit down and talk about your life for a few minutes. You just did a different storm than they were. Because there's things in your life right now. Every person in this room, there ain't a person excused from this. So I'm preaching at the man in the mirror. 
I'm preaching at you and I'm preaching at me. There isn't a person sitting here right now that doesn't have some area of their life they're not trusting God completely with. That's no faith. And that's what he's talking about. There's an area in your walk right now somewhere that you need to trust God. But yet we have no faith. So when we look at the faith ladder and we see no faith, we're not talking to non-believers. It's time to realize that as believers, I'm preaching to my Christian folk right now. As believers, Jesus is in the boat. Is he in your boat? He's in mine. Doesn't mean the storm won't rage. Doesn't mean the seas won't get a little rough. The most worst storm I've ever been in in my life. It's funny, Ryan's here. I would tell this story if he wasn't here. We were in West Bay, Florida. It was a summer evening, and all was well on the about 50 foot wooden hull shrimp boat. Imagine Forrest Gump, the shrimp boat. It's about just exactly what it looked like. And there ain't nothing in the world like a 50 or 60 mile an hour squall coming up, blowing uh, winds 50, 60 miles an hour in the middle of the dark night on a wood hull boat what pops and creaks when the waves hit it. The one and only time the captain said, boys, y'all might want to get the life jackets out from under the bed. <laughs> you can get real scary in the storm. Mm -hmm. Two things. I was just decking. But I had faith in my captain. Other boats were leaving. We're going, we're going to get in the channel. We're, we're, we're running. We're running to get into inland waters. We're going to the harbor. I see other boats scattered. We seen a sailboat. What well, had a mass doing that right there? It was rough, y'all. But I had faith in my captain. He said, we can't run from it because we can't get there fast enough. We got to put our nose into it. We got to hold on. We got to put our nose into it sometimes and hold on. It doesn't mean the storm isn't going to happen. We knew the storm was happening. We've seen the radar. It's coming. We knew it was coming. But we positioned ourselves to face it head on. And you know what? After some rough seas, scary moments, the storm passed. We had a great day of fishing that night and the next day. That's faith. What area of your life are you working in today where you have no faith? Your, the Word of God says, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. See, that's a very significant part of that verse right there. Because when I rely on my understanding more than God's ability, I'm exhibiting no faith. Woo, that's tough. I got me into this mess. I'll have to work my way up. That may be true. But I sure want him to be the one guiding me and taking me through it. Amen? Amen. The old gospel song. What can take an old man was about to say goodbye. Lift up both of his dying hands with tears in his eyes. Loved ones gathered all around him, still smile and say, no fear. The one that brought me through the storm, I'll trust him to take me from here. Amen? Amen. That's faith. That's faith. So friends, today, I would ask that you examine your life. And ask yourself, where am I living in no faith? In that account, Jesus asked this question to the disciples. I'm going to reiterate for those of us who are slow in the front of the room. Everybody in front, in the front row and beyond. He wasn't with a bunch of heathens and unbelievers. He was with his disciples. Me and you. I'm preaching to me and you today. 
He looked at them and said, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The next step in the ladder, I'm not going to get through all this as you look at it like, my Lord, he's only on point one. We haven't been here 30 minutes. No, no, just calm down. <laughs> Little faith. We find ourselves in this step ladder either when we limit our ability to do easier uh, to do easier things or when we try to help God by taking certain things into our own hands. I talked about that just a minute ago. An example to the former category about having a little faith is the Israelites of Canaan. Psalm 78, 20 says, True, he struck the rock and water gushed out, streams flowed abundantly, but he also gave us bread. Can he supply meat for his people? For them, getting water, if you remember that, they had no water that was in the desert, they got the water come from rocks, so they have something to drink. Getting water from the rock was comparatively an easier task for God than, than, than giving meat to his people. I don't want to preach a prosperity gospel because I don't believe in it. But I want to tell you something. If you're broke and need $11 to buy yourself something to eat, God can give you $4.2 billion just as easy as he can give you 50 cents. Amen. You understand that? Well, God can He can give you ten trillion dollars. The Word of God says that God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. I got a little news for you. He don't only own the cows on a thousand hills; He owns the hills too. Amen. God is not restricted by by supply and demand. We are restricted by faith. I'm gonna say it again for the slow people preaching. Listen. God is not restricted by supply and demand. He's restricted uh, because we are restricted by our lack of faith. You understand that? God is more than able. He's either all-knowing, all-seeing, omniscient, omnipresent God, or he ain't. There ain't no halfway. You can't be all and then be lacking. Does that make sense to you? Uh, Watch this. Here's a great illustration to make you understand what I'm talking about. Everything that has ever happened in your life, everything that has ever happened in your life can only possibly fall into two categories. It was either ordered by God or allowed by God. Because nothing can happen outside of those two things. If God orders it, it must be done. And if anything could possibly happen to you that God didn't allow, that means he wouldn't be in control and he's not a sovereign God. You understand that? He's a sovereign God, amen? For them getting water from the rock was so much easier than getting meat. They wanted to test God's ability to get free meat. They only had a little faith in God. They had their God as a little bitty God. God of little faith. Oh, God, just give me a little bit of what I need. In our life, we rule out certain things from our prayer, thinking that praying for such miracles is foolishness. I've actually seen men and women of God who truly live by faith, and other Christians mock their faith. Well, they just walk around just praying to God for everything. Good. Right? Good. Sometimes we even justify it by going, oh, you got to have common sense. Man, there ain't nothing about this whole faith thing that's got any common sense to it. I, 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 I'm not going to preach much longer, but every everything Jesus Christ did and the way he confounded the people by was was by turning common sense upside down, right? How do we go? How do we, how do we grow strong in life by being what weak, right? How do I get more by giving it all away? Is that is that common sense to you? 
Well, I can't. Pastor, you don't understand. I can't give. I mean, you can't give. You ain't got nothing at all. Well, I got some. But it takes everything I got. Actually, it don't, because everything you got already belongs to him anyway. Amen. Woo! Everything you got, whether it's a little or a lot, belongs to him anyway. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. When you get to a spot in life, probably, and I'm not, I'm not being braggadocious because I'm weak in other areas. I, I, I struggle in some areas. Sometimes I have faith problems. Sometimes I have obedience problems. Right, right. I don't have it all together. Sometimes I don't set the best example. Sometimes I just plain don't mess up, right? But one godly principle that I have truly, truly grown in in my life is I do not own anything. And my wife would tell you, I sure got a bunch of stuff from somebody else's stuff then. <laughs> my God. And she said, y'all can come get it. Let me prove to you you don't own anything. That house you live in? Whose was it 300 years ago? Who owned that land and she thinks yours? It ain't yours. When you die, 50 years after you die, who's going to own that land? Won't be you or you won't care. You don't own anything, friend. The only thing we have is the promises of God and the word of God. They will stand eternally. And if I'm going to have faith in any one thing, I want it to be the word of God. Amen? Amen. I want it to be the word of God. Y'all remember Peter walking on the water? Did that make any sense? Lord, is that you, he said? Jesus could have just said, yep, Peter, it's me, Jesus. Right? He said, no, Peter, get out of the boat, walk on water. Did that make any kind of sense? It doesn't, does it? It doesn't. But when we obey God, it makes sense. When we obey God, it makes sense. When he first started walking, he didn't notice the high tide. He didn't notice the storm. He didn't notice the wind. He didn't notice any, anything. He just walked. He just focused on Jesus. And then he began to sink. Because his circumstances got the best of him. His circumstances got the best of him. I don't like this part the most best. And Jesus reached out and grabbed him. If you belong to the captain, he won't let you see. And he said, you have so little faith. You see, Peter had enough faith to trust the Lord to get out on the water, but he didn't have enough faith to sustain it. You know, I talked about Eli, come on, wherever you are. I'm not ready to wrap up. I talked about this thing I gave you and the faith that it took to start it, right? And the faith that it took to make it happen, right? I cannot tell you the half a dozen or more times since we started doing this that I've been tempted to close the doors for one reason or the other. One time remains pre prevalent in my mind. It was the following year we were just getting ready to start back up the whole night shelters. It was going to get kind of sort of cold. By the way, I missed one really important detail in that story about they don't have to be cold. When I said that, the church had exactly $287 in the bank. There was no money to sustain any of it. There wasn't even enough money to open one single night, but yet God said, a year later, we're going to, it's got to get cold, the team's all amped up, ready to go. 
hey, Pastor, let's go. It's going to get cold. We're ready. Got the team ready. I looked at them and I said, it ain't just about the building being here and the volunteers being willing and ready to come do this. For me, it's also a financial decision. It costs money to open these doors. Right? This morning we got here, it was so cold, we couldn't hardly be in here, and now it's hot. And I said, we do not have the money to open cold bite shelters. Let's pray about it. That was like on a Saturday. Monday was a holiday. It was Saturday evening. The reason I'm telling you this. Tuesday morning, I sat beat my head on, on the desk half two days praying, God, I don't know how in the world I'm going to do this. I need you to show up, show out, do something, God, do something now. I heard nothing. But I kept listening to my faith. Tuesday, my assistant comes in. Morning, you have to understand this. This is why it's important. 10 o'clock. Our mail doesn't run until 3 or 4 around here. 10 o'clock, she said, did you check the mail? I said, no. She was like, to check it Saturday. No mail Sunday. Monday was a holiday. She said, you might want to see this. I said, oh. And she walked into my desk and handed me a check. Dear Pastor, we heard of the good work you're doing over on the east coast of Florida. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to God and his calling in your community. God laid it upon our heart that you would need this in this time. And it was a check for $5,000. While I was praying, it was sitting in the mailbox. While I was praying, it was sitting in the mailbox, y'all. That's my God. He's faithful. This morning, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'll finish this another day. This is good. It's worth the journey. This morning, what area of your life has God asked you to trust Him in? And you know that God has asked you to trust Him, but yet still you haven't done so. Because you think you can work it out. You think you're strong enough. You think your plan's better than His. That's operating in no faith. Or what area of your life, man, I believe in God and I trust Him. He always meets my needs. I got enough rice and beans to make it through the week. But you don't trust that God can get you a porterhouse day. I'm just being silly about that. God's not limited. Our faith just limits us. This morning, if you have an issue that you need to work through with God about no faith or little faith, I want to ask you to just come and pray. We won't, we we're not going to come lay hands on you. We're not going to bother you. But I don't want you to leave here like you can. Because God's dealing with some folks about faith this morning. Amen? Where do you need to trust God? Let's pray. Father God, we love you today. God, we ask you to into our hearts this morning, God. Because God, there are believers walking, but in areas of their life, they just haven't exhibited the faith that we need to exhibit. And God, there are believers that have a little faith, God, but they limit you without full faith. This morning, God, we want a full measure. We want the faith of a mustard seed, but it has to be a whole mustard seed, God. God, we believe in you and we believe in your word. Lord, have your way in our life this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Do I sing this song? Would you pray and ask God to meet you where you are?